The Pomodoro timer is a great little tool to help you focus. If you don't know what it is, generally it is 25 minutes of focus work and then five minutes rest and you keep repeating that. It's also a really good way to practice some CSS and JavaScript. So that's what we're going to be building. But I'm going to break this down into different parts just to try and make it more manageable and to try and make things clear when I'm explaining it. So I'm going to break it down into four or five parts. The fifth one might just be a bonus. Part one is just going to be the countdown timer. It's pretty important to understand what this is since, you know, it's a timer. We need to get a basic timer working. The second part will just be alternating between the work and the rest time. Third part will be, you know, play, pause, stop, reset, that kind of thing. And the fourth one will be user input so you can adjust the times that you want to work and rest. As a bonus, because I'll be using this on stream, I stream over on Twitch at cdev010. I want to be able to pass parameters through in the URL. So I'll be modifying it slightly and creating different versions for stream. That'll be a bonus video if you want to check it out. Let me just show you, I've got a repo set up over on GitHub. I'll have it linked down below if you want to check it out. And I've got right now, I've got three different branches. I'll add more later on, haven't quite finished it. So we've got the countdown timer, work rest and pause reset. So today we're just going to be looking at the countdown timer. And this is generally what it looks like. I'll just quickly refresh the page. So I've hard coded values, just a 30 second timer. After the 30 seconds, it then you know, goes red and says end or finish, something like that. And it's a nice little kind of animation to show that the time is ticking down. So that is what we're going to be building today. Let's jump over to the code and get everything set up. So I've got three files, just your HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Let's get the HTML set up and we'll just call this countdown. I'm going to add in the CSS now, link CSS, and it is correctly named styles. Brilliant. And then I want a container for the countdown. So we'll just call, give this a class of data percent. And then inside it, we'll do a span. We'll just do a div with an ID of timer. And don't forget to add in the script. Okay, that is pretty much the HTML done. Obviously, nothing is appearing on the screen because you know, these are just blank divs. Let's go over to the styles. I just generally like to reset everything. So oops, margin zero, padding zero. Oops, box sizing, box sizing, border box, and just repeat that. This is just like habit for me now doing this. For the body, I just want to center everything for now. So I'll use grid, so display grid. And we'll do place item center. And we'll also give it a min height of 100 view height. Then we'll work on the actual data percent and the we're going to use variables within the CSS here, just so we can update that with JavaScript and have that nice animation kind of going around. So we've got data percent. Let's give it an angle of 360 degrees and a color of blue. So those will be the two variables we'll be updating. Again, I'll do display grid and place item center again, just so I can center the text for now. I want a position relative because we're going to do a pseudo element after. So because we're going to use a pseudo element, I want to add in the Z index of just say 100. The background, and this is pretty cool. We're going to use conic gradient. Gradient. I always get this the wrong way around. So we're going to use, I think it's var color first to the zero angle. Then we'll do var color to the angle. And then white. and 
white 360 degrees. Let's give it a height and width. Your pixels. I'll just do aspect ratio here. Uh, what have I done wrong? I don't think these need quote marks. There we go. Yes, they don't need quote marks. My mistake. And I want this to be a circle, so classic border radius 50%. So if I just change the angle, say to 270, you'll see that it goes round in a nice little way there. So I'm just going to keep that as 360, but I don't want it just as a blue circle. This is why I want the pseudo element. So we're going to do after content is blank. Position absolute, absolute, Z index of minus one, height, let's just do 90% width, 90% top, 5% and left, 5%. Then I need my background of white. Border radius again. Perfect. So let's again just put this down to 270 and you'll see that it looks kind of like a percentage circle. Sweet. Let's just add in some default time there. I kind of want to make this a little bit bigger for now. So we want to target the timer. Font size. Let's just go to rem. Yep. Perfect. So that is the CSS all sorted. We've got the index CSS now, we're just working on the JavaScript. So for a basic timer, let's create two variables for the work and rest time. We don't need the rest time right now, I'm just adding it in. So work time. And I'll give this a 30 seconds, so 30 times 1000 and const rest time equals 10 by 1000. Then I'm going to create a second variable here. So let timer, or we'll call it let current time equal work time. Just because then in the future, we're going to alternate and change which one this is referring to. Then I want to get the actual data percent class element, this one, because we're going to be updating the variables via JavaScript. That's the angle and the color. I also want to get the timer because we're going to update the inner text. So const uh, data percent. Cool. Then let's just duplicate this timer. Uh, get element by ID. And this one was called timer. I don't need the zero. I've got my two elements. So there's going to be two functions I want to use. I want to create a function for actually doing the time like countdown, which is just going to happen every second. So that would be an interval. Then I also want another function which will update the data percent and the inner text of the timer. So let's create the functions. Function countdown. We're going to pass in the time. And I'm going to move countdown interval. So countdown interval, set interval. And this is going to happen every one second. So if countdown interval, I just want to clear the countdown. So clear interval, countdown interval. Otherwise, I want to say run that other function. Then we'll pass through the current time. So we'll just pass this here now, t time. But nothing's going to be changing with the time. So let's first do p time is equal to p time minus 1000. So it goes down every second. I want to do a check. If p time is less than or equal to zero, we should be doing something else. 
you know, that'll be when we turn the color red, for instance. Otherwise, we could update the timer. So let's update the timer. I could do the check here. I'll also put the clear interval down here just to make sure we stop counting once it's gone past zero. So we could do if p time is less than or equal to zero, we're going to do something here. Oops. So this will be turn red, reset angle. So how do we do that? We first target the data percent style dot. So we've got, we want to target the angle and change that to 360 degree. And we also want to change the color to red. So we just call this while I'm working on it. We'll see what happens on current time. Yeah, we're not going to look at, uh, let's put this down to five just for the example. Oops, getting an error. Cannot access countdown interval before initialization. That's okay. I don't think we need this because I am now clearing the interval when it's less than zero. I've got my order of my JavaScript wrong. There we go. So I was trying to access the countdown interval within the function before initializing the variable. That's fine. And this is not property, set property, because I want to update it. Set property. Same down here, set property. Uh, that's changed to red, which is nice, but I want to calculate the angle. Angle. Color will leave as that. So to calculate the angle, we have let angle is equal to current time, or well, p time, divided by work time times 360. If we just console.log angle, 288, 216, yeah. But let's add in degrees, just so it will work when we set the property straight away. And we can copy this down here, angle as angle. Great, the angle is going down, but the reset of the angle didn't work. Let's just do an else just to make sure that we don't update it necessarily again. And we can get the timer. So we need to calculate the minutes and the seconds. We could do hours and milliseconds, but I don't think that's necessary right now. So to get the minutes, we want to say math.floor of p time divided by 60 divided by a thousand dot to string and pad pad start. We want two characters and we were filling it with zero. Very similar for seconds. We want math.floor p time. Let's get some extra brackets in here. Divided by a thousand. But we want to do a modulus of 60. Again, two string. Dot pad start. Two and zero. And we just console log these two minutes and seconds. Four, three, two, one, zero. Perfect. So all we have to do now is combine these into the timer. Timer dot in a text equals oops. Minutes and seconds. So we're updating the timer, but if I just refresh this uh, slightly, oops. So we've got one issue there where the timer hasn't updated. So let's just make sure that works here. That's zero, zero, uh, zero, zero. So that's one issue. 
But you see, at the very start, it goes 0, 0 at the full one. What we can do here is actually quickly update the timer just to make sure it works straight away. And that is a basic timer. Let's put this back up to 30 seconds. and We can see it working a little bit nicer. So how we've done this, we've got time for work and rest time. We set a current time. This will be more valuable in the future. We're accessing the data percent element to update the angle and the color. And we've got the timer element where we're updating the inner text. We've got two functions, the countdown function, which is just an interval happening every second where we are updating the kind of current time. Then we've got the update countdown, which is just for styling, updating the angle and the colors where necessary. So if it's zero, less than or equal to zero, that's the end of the timer. And we just set everything kind of to zero, reset the angle and change the color to red. If the timer is still in effect, we calculate the angle by just taking the current time divided by work time, multiplying that by 360 because of 360 in an angle and adding on degrees. And then we calculate the minutes by dividing the time by 60 and 1000 to get the number of remaining minutes. We pad it just so there's always a zero in front of it. So it's to two precision. We calculate the remaining seconds as well, similar divided by 1000 modulus of 60, again, pad it with zero and we update the timer in a text. So that is a basic timer countdown function. Next time we will be using this rest time and we'll be alternating between work and rest. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. Hope you all have a nice day and I will catch you later.